What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? It is hey, Tuesday. How's it going, Lisa? <laughs> going good. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great. We're so excited to be here. Uh, we've got a great graphic design session for today and tomorrow. Um, You've seen who's here. Uh, Lisa, give yourself a, a little intro. Tell everybody about yourself and, and what you do, where you're from, awesome. all that fun stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So, hi, I'm Lisa. Um, I usually go by the name Made by Lisa Marie. Um, but yeah, so I'm an illustrator and graphic designer from Chicago, and um, I'm super excited to be on here today. We'll be doing um, some packaging design for a cider label, but basically um, I do a lot of just merch and apparel design. So everything from hats and stickers and t-shirts for different brands um, to also uh, gift stickers. And uh, lately I've been doing a lot of packaging design as well. So that's um, great. I'm, yeah. It's like a perfect segue. We were just talking about that earlier about so many designers that might be really, really proficient in this illustration world and like what you can do to kind of expand and get into other things that are just as complimentary, right? Oh yeah, I, I really feel like illustration and graphic design, I mean, they're two in the same thing. Like it definitely feeds each other. So yeah, um, I love mixing them. And it's also really quite like apparent that you do a lot of your own type and everything as well. So in addition to that, there's that great combination of being a graphic designer too, but someone that can hand draw and do all these great fonts for fun, right? Absolutely, yeah. I. It's funny, I, I feel like even with that, like I used to just kind of quickly draw things as like almost a sketch or whatnot. And then I would send it to the client and tell them like, hey, I'll, I'll like pick a font. And then they actually would say like, no, actually I like your handwriting. So that's yeah. kind of how that started. Well, here's, so. oh, I picked on a perfect example. This is kind of a unique way to see how your pencil moves into your first line work and then almost stays true all the way to the very end, right? Right. Yeah. Like I, I think that literally that's some of my earlier work where it really was like I, I almost had the hand lettering as I mean, it's just my handwriting in that one specifically um, or yeah. that last one where um, it, it made it to the final cut, which is that's kind of really fun. cool. And then you can see the close up here. You can see how how great even just I love seeing oh. interpretations of logos that we know, but done in a way that it almost has your signature on it, which is really yeah. neat. That's cool. So what, what are we going to be doing today? What's or today and tomorrow? Give us a little yeah. a little uh, sneak preview. So today um, I will be going over. Well, both days, actually, we'll be doing some packaging design for a cider label. Um, this it's actually it's a real cider company um, uh, called Lost Boy Cider based out of uh, Alexandria, Virginia, right outside of D.C. Um, and I've been doing monthly packaging designs for them. So we are going to be um, doing a behind the scenes live process of um, how I come up with the next um, design. So today we'll be doing sage advice is what it's called. So it's sage and cranberries is the cider flavor. And then I'll actually, um, I, I'll have you uh, in the chat vote for which um flavor you want me to to design next week so or, i'm sorry not next week tomorrow but, <laughs> she's um, like i plan to be here for two weeks folks yeah um, <laughs> adobe clear your schedule yeah, exactly here. we've got some ciders to design yeah <laughs> cool well that's great and then we're gonna get right into it i just want to get, give you guys a quick reminder i love seeing everybody in chat i see so many great familiar names um be sure to check out the second week of the new photoshop daily creative challenges they're with Howard Pinsky every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Don't miss out on this new set of challenges. Something to look forward to. There's such great stuff here all over the channel, either live or um, you know on presets and back back in the day in the library. So um, let's get back. Let's get into it. Where are we going to start? Yeah. So I am starting in Adobe Fresco, which is um, really what I mm. do like 90% of my work in. I love Fresco. Um, definitely been a game changer drawing on the iPad since I do have um, just like a fine art background. I really like the, I like drawing um, <laughs> everything, uh, it, even in real life first. So um, I, I do have some sketches. I did some homework for this. Um, oh, great. Let's see. So I have some sketches, which I um, just, I always like to sketch out on just, and then I'll take photos and kind of import it in here. But great. this is, um, this is kind of what um, I was thinking as far as um, the design. So the, the this can flavor, like I was saying, is called Sage 
advice. And really, this is how I always kind of get the prompt is um, I'll have the name of, of what the flavor is called and then the ingredients, which um, this is just, what is it? Sage and cranberries. Nice. Um, I don't think that's going to fit. Okay, almost, it just barely fits. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically I was thinking, my thoughts through this were like sage advice. That's kind of like a... Um, uh, wisdom, like just different things that you want to kind of, uh, pass down or yeah. whatever, you know, just, it's that kind of like cute phrase for different, uh, different wise things. <laughs> it, well, it's so funny. Like this has to be the beginning of like the creativity here, right? Like the name. Exactly. Of it. I love when creatives can also do, I know maybe this was brought to you, but like knowing that it has to, the copy has to play a big part in how this is going to sell. It becomes the, almost like the building blocks for what this brand and this packaging could look like, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I always try to kind of play off and even like this, the cider brand, they do a lot of like fun titles for each one. So it really is a good jumping point for like my ideas. Um, and then also even like thinking through, okay, when is this going to be released? This is yes. going to be for November. So it'll be like kind of Thanksgiving time. So even like my color palette, I choose kind of based on like the months. Um, so even I have some colors too that um, I pulled up. So I'll get rid of that Excellent. layer. So again, this is just showing you um, how I, it's almost like my brain dump of like ideas. Like what, what can I pull? um from just those few little cues um yes and yeah so basically I'll, I'll just start um sketching these out and then as you can see over so these um let's see, let's see this these are all um like i was thinking it'd be fun to do like little badges because i actually haven't done that before but um i'm kind of i do a lot of badge design in my work so yeah. for a lot of like hats t-shirts apparel whatever so I thought it would be fun to actually do that on um, a cider can. Um, so kind of like again, that sticker collage. It almost feels like passport or lug old luggage. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like bumper stickers or something. Good. And then I just kind of came up with some like pretty universal um, just sayings of you know things like show up fully, learn something new every day, do what's right, not what's easy. You know, just yeah. kind of these like kind of cute um basic wisdom pieces um and this is uh, roughly how i'm hoping it'll turn out from just like a front facing um cider can great but, um yeah so I, and then actually after i i draw these out i do have this is the actual label size so i will arrange this um and then send it over to illustrator and um basically put it on the full packaging because this is great. just the artwork part. So I think you bring up a great point because we have a question that Megan asked and she says she's okay. having a really hard time adjusting to fresco. She's such a big mm. fan of paper to pencil. Yes. Um, and I totally get that. I do too. But like when you can make a shortcut, like you were saying, and export directly into Illustrator with no hassle, like what other, what other, like, what are the other benefits or the things that you find so much more easier in being able to start your drawing on digital? Yeah. So, I mean, even what I'm literally jumping right into right now, why the thing that I love about Fresco is um, it's vector based. So yes. like, again, I do um, a lot, a lot of different merchandise. And so I can draw something one time <laughs> and scale yes. it as small as, you know, a business card and make it as large as a billboard, which I literally, Great. I just designed a billboard in Fresco um, last See? month, you know, and it, it's just, it's crazy. It's so, um, so and, convenient. And no worry of the pixelation because of just the vector quality of that one pen, the vector pen that you're using for sure. Exactly. So and look how she's turning. So like, I love this idea of like, it almost is the best of both worlds. Cause you, you are getting everything you can do with a sketchbook or a piece of paper in front of you. But now you have this, you can take that now and duplicate it and make a slightly bigger version of it, right? Or alter it. Which is exactly. great. Exactly. Yes. Um, and I totally um, still also love sketching at first, yeah. like in um, in a sketchbook or on computer paper, you know, scrap paper, whatever. I do think that that is very helpful to at least like start your initial um, process. 
in analog. Um, but then like, as you can see here, I just take a picture and I jump right in. And, Perfect. Um, yeah. And so you could, I, I've been messing around with it too. I think sometimes there's a certain feel or something I can only get with ink on paper and I'll just shoot it with like capture or something. And again, now you're sending it directly into Illustrator or Photoshop again and, and fre or Fresco and you, you're getting to, I almost feel like we're cheating sometimes. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so great, you know? Yes, it's so easy. Do you That's use cool. Fresco a lot or what? I, I have just started and um, what was neat was we, we were able to do a introductory Fresco um, course on our show office hours and what we, what was so cool about it was I really wanted to practice it as much as possible before even showing stuff on there. And yeah. I, I loved it so much. I challenged myself and I actually did the first uh, packaging project 100% made on Fresco. That oh, I, awesome. And that was, that was my challenge that if I, if I could do it and do it all on the iPad and then send it into Illustrator and drop it into the die line or the a template I had for the can, um, yeah. to me it was like, that was a win-win. I was like, perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. So I like what you're doing. You're I, this zooming in and kind of doing bits of pieces of erasing and like redrawing. Yeah, just trying to clean it up real quick. Um, and honestly, I am going to be working a little bit faster than I normally do. It's That's OK. A lot cleaner than this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed with your lines as you were drawing. Like I tend to draw very uh, sketchy. Like I go, I do the like the sketch draw for a line. Oh whereas, right. Yeah right. And, whereas you were drawing so, and when it, when your lines met, I was like, oh, that's so on target. I love it. This looks. I great. mean, we are just going for it here. Are we <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, trying to do the whole project in, yeah. in one. What other thing, questions? So. If you chat, if you have anything as far as a fresco you know, um, specifically that kind of, you know, moving into it and transferring over and feeling more comfortable there, uh, drop a question into chat and we'll definitely uh, chat about it. Cause I, I, I love when something new comes around and then it could show me some new ways that my process and my flow is not only better, but I think more efficient and more time, more, less time consuming. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the other thing is like it, it's so nice because um, Fresco like speaks easily to Illustrator and um, Photoshop. You know, you can just literally send it right yeah. in there, and um, yeah, yeah, it's just so it's so great. <laughs> it's honestly my favorite app. It's kind of like where where had it been, right? Like it was like now right. it makes it makes so much sense the way it complements the rest of the. Um, rest of those things. I'm seeing a lot of great names there. I see Laura. Hey, Laura, welcome here. Kobe, what's up? Voodoo Vals here. Wow. We're getting a hey, good everybody. audience. This is great. Let, yeah, let awesome. us know if there's any questions when it comes to making that transition over to Fresco. I think yeah. it's super, I mean, one, it's free. You have it. <laughs> like, let's just mess around with it, you know? Um, I know a few people who have even purchased the iPad just because now they love the fact that it's so intertwined with the rest of their, um, you know, creative Adobe world, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say hi to Voodoo Val. Um, we actually did um, or my last Adobe Live. Uh, we, we streamed together. And that oh, was cool. Fun, so. She's the best. She What's is. up, Val? Ooh, good question. Do you use reference when illustrating or at this point, are you drawing from pure imagination, even when you're doing these little, you know, rough thumbnails? So I, um, I really try to start projects with just what's in my head. Yeah. Um, I really try not to look at anything. Um, sometimes, I mean, even like with this, like it'll, it'll be like a weird fruit that I'm like, I don't know what a dragon fruit looks like off the top of my head. So I'll like Google an image of a dragon yes. fruit. But um, a lot of this stuff, I will just um, kind of be like, I think that this is what this looks like and draw it. And then, um, you know, if it's way off, then um, obviously I'll fix it. But I do, I really, um, I only try to look at references like kind of at the second pass and then yes um also just like actual um kind of like more like boring photos of things too like not not really... too specific right like you want yeah. the most generic almost version absolutely because right? i love yes. that you can throw your own spin to it right like we i love I, I was seeing someone talked once about drawing letters and saying like everyone knows the way he he drew an f was so weird 
that someone even said you should correct that because it can't be read as a, as a as an f and he said well that's my f like i want it to be my signature in a way you know which is kind yes. of unique and it yeah. made me think like i'll never second guess how i do something now because i love hearing people having that kind of confidence you know yeah and i even feel like especially with illustration work like mm -hmm. um at least i guess with my past clients i mean i really i as illustrators, you have such a unique style. It's almost like a signature where it's like, it yes. just kind of comes out of you. It's like, I can't, I'm not really thinking about how I'm drawing. I'm just drawing and this is kind of what always comes yes. out. Yes. And so um, I think it's like, I've, I've learned to just trust that. I used to try to like really taper my style and make it look more like, oh, what, what's trending right now. Um, but I'm, I've found and like, as I've, um, I guess grown a little bit more confident with um, being an illustrator, just like um, if clients like that, that work, that style, like they'll hire me, you know, and then they're yes. hiring me for, yep. for like my work and not for something else. And it, it just, it's just such a better flow of things. I, guess. I totally love that idea because it's true. They're, they're hiring you for what you show, what you do. Uh, right. not what you copy or not what you are inspired by with other people, you know? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So and, I, and if I don't have that style, then that's okay. It yeah. wasn't the right client, you know, so like it's here, here's the perfect, I think, benefit of why I think drawing digitally is the way to go. All these little nuances and yeah. things you're not redrawing it. You're not getting the all. chance to almost transform it a little bit. And look, now you've got this beautiful one already done and it looks super clean. You've balanced it out because I know like drawing on the arc, every time i try to do that with lettering i'm usually you know i need one more inch or i'm an inch short <laughs> right <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah yeah that looks and, great and even this lasso tool has been so helpful like um it's so easy to just kind of quickly move things around and um yeah it's that's nice. great do you use any protector or screen protector or the like the i know there's that one that has a better grip with the pencil are you using that by any chance you know what i don't i i've definitely heard about it and i've heard that it's like it's pretty awesome and and it feels a little bit more like you're drawing like in um on a piece of paper but yeah. I, I haven't tried it yet i feel like i have gotten actually very used to this so yeah it doesn't bother me um gotcha but Definitely, if you're someone that is um, really used to analog and does not like the screen, I definitely, I think it's probably worth checking out. Um, yeah, I was, yeah. I'm curious to try it too, because sometimes I feel like for someone that doesn't have the most, the best like illustration skills, I think slowing it down with a little bit of grit on the pad would probably help the drawing process. Whereas doing it on the glass, sometimes I'm a little like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. I know it is kind of, kind of slippery sometimes, but you get used to it. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I know before the chat, we were kind of saying that, uh, or we we're talking about kind of like analog stuff. Um, and that I, I've recently started painting again, just kind of for me, like no client, just, um, just painting again but it's so funny though with like there's no command z like i'll think yes. of it in my head like oh no i can't just like maneuver things around or um, i do that every, in just everyday life now right right <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's man. awesome yeah so if you guys have just tuned in we are with lisa mccormick and she's doing um Hi. these wonderful little illustrations that um, she's starting in fresco and then the goal is to kind of move these into illustrator and the whole point is um, a cider can so she's designing some new flavors and we're gonna have a blast kind of seeing how it goes from one you know application to the other but still keeping the essence of everything she's created on fresco which has the entire hand lettering hand drawn feel really cool yeah thank you yeah and if you guys are watching us over on YouTube, come on over here. This is the place to do it. Do it at behance.net slash live. Uh, join in on the conversation. What's up, Santiago? We're getting some great people here. Ralph is here. Bernadette, everybody's joining in. This is great. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Looking good. So we're on the second one here. The kind of theme we loved was this idea of almost like the, the 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 luggage case from the past that has all of these travel posters and or stickers on it like a nice collage 
and it turns out to make a really cool can design when you think about it you know it's kind of sh and these are all essence of sage and knowledge and wisdom which is kind of a great tie-in to the uh flavor yeah totally um, Boy, the sage cranberry now that just sounds doesn't so it? you said it's coming out in like november was it yeah so this yeah. will be their november one so i think part of the inspiration was like thanksgiving you know all the flavors Fall. and spices mm -hmm. yes exactly so um i'll definitely have to try this one it i've noticed so too with, with doing anything too seasonal if you if it if it has to be 100 percent seasonal right like pick your season uh, right great but then a lot of times i've noticed too in designing stuff for clients if you can make it somewhat flexible that it has a bigger in case what if it what if it does really well and they want to continue it on and it's past the holidays right like sometimes it's fun to kind of just give it enough but not so it's only a holiday design yeah like I, i'm not drawing like a turkey on yeah, here like, and like you know like holly leaves, leaves and cranberry yeah you know with the cranberries yes. mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah i i do try to make things pretty subtle um for that reason exactly um, yeah and it's also just something a little bit more unexpected maybe yep. like i think that you know this is not what i think of when i think of thanksgiving typically sure. you know like this wasn't like my first idea for thanksgiving but um yeah. so hopefully it'll be something that will kind of stand out a little bit still um, on the shelves yeah. um, in grocery stores. So I love that. I think ciders and even seltzers have really opened up design to what you could do on a can. And I'm now you're seeing it at even sodas and waters. And I think there's such yes. a demand now for like, you could do almost any style on cans where they used to have to have some certain vibe or style, you know, there's, I, I love this. It's really it, cool. It really is like, I feel like they have been such great clients where, um, I mean, especially, I mean, this cider client in particular, yeah. um, I, cause I've done some other packaging design. I'm also working on like a wine, um, bottle label right now. And, um, I've done some, some different beer, um, and bourbon packaging, but, um, this, this cider company in particular, um, they are very open to like whatever I want to do. Like they, nice. they kind of like let me run with it, which is super fun. Um, there's been a lot of times where I'll, I'll throw out an idea and I don't think that they're going to like let me go with it. And that's yeah. actually the one they choose. And so yeah. yeah, it's like, <laughs> it does feel like there's like a lot of creative freedom, which is awesome. That's great. Sometimes that, that's like every, what every creative hopes for. Then sometimes you're like, you got to give me something I need. Like, like, I want to make sure I'm on track, you know? Like, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. If you get a brief that might not have enough texture, enough, you know, an, enough kind of character to pull from, what kind of questions would you start asking a potential or maybe an ongoing client for mm. some more, for some more detail? Yeah. So I do feel like I'm, I'm one of those people that actually typically likes to have more creative freedom than not so I'm, yeah. I'm okay if the client is like um this is who it's for this is you know the industry or whatever um and run with it you know like yes. i i actually i like that um which i know some people hate it um it's i think that's kind of a personality thing um yeah but um i guess even like Right now, I'm, I do a lot of designs for different like zoos and aquariums and museums around the country, like all of their gift shop goods. Um, yes. And there was uh, one of one of my projects right now um, is like she was like, we want uh, or the art director was like, we want just like science designs for juniors. And so that's mm. like, you know, that's all I get. And then. Yeah. Um, so I guess with that, I mean. I think really just knowing like who is it for and what's some type of theme I feel like is enough. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. Did that answer your question? Yeah. I Cause I think, <laughs> and I love that everybody has a different take on that regardless. You know, sometimes you work with clients that give you full briefs and you're just kind of creating what exactly they need. But when they, I love it when they ask for the creatives input, because I, I love that creatives are now doing more research, looking into personas, the customer, you know, what yeah. are the needs of this thing and what's the feeling that you want this this work to evoke when someone's 
checking it out, right? Like walking through a gift shop, like is, is it gonna speak to that person? Um, and you wanna have the best shot that your designs are really gonna work, you know? Absolutely. Oh, and I guess actually another kind of helpful thing that I've learned to ask sometimes if I'm not totally sure, if like, if almost the client is giving me some like contradicting feedback yeah. of like, they want this yes. and this, that it's like these two things don't go together. Um, and, and you got to be the, the like the graphic police there. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, that's always a little rough. But mm -hmm. I do like asking like, because um, especially if um, if the client like found me and they're like, we're reaching out to you because we want to do, you know, this project. I'll ask them like, oh, so uh, like just like what were some of the pieces in my portfolio that you really like? Mm, good idea. Um, and that really helps me narrow down like, the style especially yes. i found like a lot of clients like they even they like to um they usually like to see like that already in the portfolio of pretty much almost what they want right. um so if i can pinpoint what they were liking from um some of my past work and then just kind of translate it into the project that usually is a very quick way to excellent hone in on what they're looking for that's great yeah and so it's different every time too right it's never the yeah. same it's never the same right what are some of the favorite artists you're looking at now or designers or illustrators that uh inspire you audrey had a question oh um so i um i'm a really big fan of like impressionistic mm -hmm. art from like paintings um so I, I mean, I love Van Gogh, um, Renoir, Monet. Um, so I do look at like a lot of like, I guess, paintings from like the 1800s. Um, um, and I love like old travel posters, mm -hmm. um, oh, kind of like the, the 40s. Yeah. So um, I definitely, I, I kind of, um, yeah, I'll like hunt for that kind of stuff online. Um, <laughs> yeah, just kind of go into like weird rabbit holes. Um, but yeah, and then I'm trying to think of um, even just, gosh, I mean, there's so many amazing illustrators that I definitely follow on Instagram. Um, I'm kind of bad with names. I would have to look them up right now. But there's, there's one, I think her name's like Monique. When, oh gosh, I'll have to look it up. Oh, but, sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Love you can see up. who I'm following on Instagram. Yeah, there you go. That's always a good. And yeah. your Instagram handle again is? Oh, yes. It's made by Lisa Marie. Perfect. Very easy to remember. I love that. Yes. So you're doing some, this is your first like filling uh, font. You're doing a much bolder one there. So I noticed you do your two outlines and then just fill in. Yeah. Looks great. Totally. And I guess I could use the paint bucket tool. Yeah. I'm, I'm being kind of. <laughs> Unefficient right now. Oh, and it's also popping around. There we go. There we go. Um, but yeah, here I'll do the paint bucket. Boom. So much easier. I like too that it's not so intimidating. I think when you look at the the program itself, I think a few people were mentioning the user the user interface is very familiar. It feels like you're at home already with this, and to not feel too intimidated. I mean, like. Um, the one thing I tried doing once was I did some of the, you know, you can live stream right from your iPad in Fresco yeah. onto Behance. So if you really want to give yourself a challenge, do that. You'll get a few people watching and it's neat. Everybody's super encouraging. And uh, I learned some great tips because somebody tuned in and was a, a really good seasoned uh, Fresco user. And it was really fun. It was kind of like, I was almost like a live tutorial. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. that's so fun. I yeah. was, um, as part of the, uh, like fresco beta streamers yes um last year and i think it, i mean it must have spent like 100 hours streaming doing that and it, oh it is gosh. really fun just like chatting and i feel like you you kind of make friends too like yeah. that um that you just kind of meet over over streaming and mm -hmm. it's a really fun fun little world oh this Which, community was, is great yeah. And especially during, I mean, all of the lockdowns last mm -hmm. year, it was nice to just like meet new people, but in like a digital way and kind of have like this whole new community. Yeah. I'm oh, so I, and it's still, it. I, I love that that's still happening and, and I yes. feel like it's still going to, it'll continue on past all this. It's nice to see we got a little forced time to open up our network, meet new people. 
um, Absolutely. And, and learn, you know, oh, there we go. Now you hit my note. That's me right there. Now, real quick, you have not that's uh, not what's easy. You have that on a, on another layer, right? Um, so yeah, you like you do your frame. I, I, we should have maybe mentioned that I love do a little bit of your frame break out there of how you're doing layers. Yeah, so I um, honestly, my I, this, this is maybe um, I don't have like the most scientific method of my <laughs> layers going on right now because I have right and a different one and these letters. But I just like to sometimes have different layers just so honestly, it's easy to move things. So it's, yes. And again, I'm, I'm honestly doing a lot of this pretty quickly. So again, it's a little sloppy, but I'm trying to at least make sure things are decently centered. Um, right. And so this is an, a really easy way of like, let's say I drew right and it's like, it ends up like that. Yes. I can so easily just go boom and there you go. just kind of fix it a little bit. Um, even like not what's easy oops, is um, off to the left. So I'll use my lasso tool. Um, right. since this actually is on a layer with do what is, so I can't just move it. I have to lasso it out, but, Perfect. um, again, it's just like a little quick jump. Um, but if it was on the same layer as your badge, then you, you lassoing it, you would have caught a bit of that badge. So the, the whole, the whole benefit of doing these different layers is they are independent of each other, which is great. Exactly. Yeah. Just like it just, any other app. It makes it a lot faster. Yeah. Got a question. When you're designing some yeah. of these cider labels, are you limited to a certain amount of colors? Ooh, I'm not, which I'm mm -hmm. very thankful for. Actually, that's a great question. Yeah, I um, I don't know why. I guess, however, I'm assuming it's four color I, process in the in the ending, right? Uh, when they print these, I think so. Yeah, I haven't actually seen like the printer itself in person. Mm -hmm. Um, there, it's out of uh, DC, so they're um they're a little bit of ways away but um hopefully i'll i'll get back out Good. there soon but uh yeah i would expect if you know kobe asked the question if you in most cases you know if you're doing spot pms and and printing it that way then obviously you're quite limited but there's a reason you're probably doing it you it's probably some signature color that the brand needs you know yeah. to have a like a, a custom but in most cases what's great about this is such a, that's why it's such a fun new art form for designers is it is unlimited. You can, yes. as long as you're doing four color process, this could all be easily printable. Yeah. I honestly feel like, like ciders or, you know, seltzers or beer, or whatever. Beverage water, in general. Yeah. Beverage <laughs> in general. It's so, um, it's such a great template for artists to use because it's like one thing that's fun is it's going to live in the real world and it's, it's not like a very expensive piece of artwork that no one's, you know, like that a couple people are going to buy, but it's something that, you know, hundreds or thousands of people yes. are going to buy. And um, even like if it's a seasonal thing, you can really, or like a limited edition thing, you can really have fun with it. And it's, it doesn't have to be this thing that is, has to last for six years. Like it can be a like experimental thing and exactly. you kind of see how <laughs> people respond and love it. Um, there's so much, yeah, there's so much to play with. It's really yeah. fun. And I know you're going to get into, we have a, Laura asking a question about color palettes in general. We'll yes. probably, I think we'll get to that when she's, she's, she's going to show what she put together. Um, I love that idea too. Like when, even before you show some of them, we talked earlier, you were thinking this is obviously November, maybe October time. And you're, you love thinking of seasons as a great spot to think of color inspiration, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I just try to give myself like a couple of like cues or boundaries yeah. i guess to work within and then um so i guess like seasonal like what season is this in is a really easy like okay let me take that cue as my color palette yeah like um so yeah that that's kind of how my brain works when you're at a complete blank and you're like i i got us i just need a quick color palette where do you what kind of resources do you turn to nature um like mm. what where do, where do you pull from yeah so it's funny this is i think one of the things that um when i when i uh i guess really transitioned from just doing more fine art to like design i used to yeah. never really think of like color palettes as an artist i was like you know like whatever i don't know colors come to mind yeah. whereas a designer you're a little bit more like thinking with the end in mind yeah so i started honestly researching for 
months, just color, which maybe sounds a little crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I and I but I'm also I'm the type of person that likes to collect things, you know, like I'm, I love thrifting. I love like, you know, I have a million patches that I've collected. So I, I actually like collecting color palettes. Yeah. So, um, after that, I've kind of gained this huge resource of different color palettes. Um, so where did I get those? I mean, again, some of them are, like I said, even like thrifting, like kind of, I, I like old stuff. So, yeah. um, looking at like, you know, especially badges, patches, stickers. I mean, a lot of the things I draw are things that I like in real life. Um, yeah. so like looking at like what colors did they use? Um, or, um, definitely nature. Um, remember my sister lives in Seattle and, um, I like specifically remember walking around her neighborhood and it was like this moody gray day and but the buildings had some cool like pops of red and yellow and um, blues and it, it was just like such a cool color palette and I took a picture of it and actually that's one of my color palettes that I use um, today and yeah um, there's also some good Instagram resources like the Topia tones, I think, yep. is like a good. They have swatches that go together really well. Um, so yeah, kind of, I, kind of just like hunting for colors. Um, <laughs> There's your new your new website, them. color hunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, that sounds that sounds fun to me at least. <laughs> That's great because I know I love doing. I love pulling from. Obviously, I use like either you can go right to Adobe Color and look at a palette that maybe somebody has already done with with some name to it that is uh, in association of what you're looking for, right? Yeah. And also too, like like you said, taking that picture and bringing it in, I love how now like Illustrator or Capture can literally take a photo and you can edit color with a photo that you've brought in. And you're like, it, it literally turned your entire Illustrator collection into colors when you eye drop and color edit an image you've brought in. So you can turn it from an Easter pastel to like this Hawaiian tropic in like one click. It's it's just amazing how fast you can do these things now, which is great. You it's know? amazing how easy they've like made it mm -hmm. for us. <laughs> yeah. And I think when it comes from those natural choices, like, you know, getting rid of the default color, you know, palettes that we all have, because I think we'll tend to use like, there's my red, there's my green, but like having a more signature red or a signature, whatever the color is, I think, not only is something neat for you to explore, but your client in the long run will, will I think, appreciate it because a, comp a competitor might not have that logo, that color, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do you um, like to pick colors or find colors? Ooh, it's always through inspiration. And I think one of the things I do is I do a, a pretty much a brand board at the beginning that is chock full of the the cool stuff, the things that I found that mm. I'm showing the client, like this is the direction I think we should go without drawing it or designing anything yet. I show them a, a cool collage. And it's so cool because I'm, I'm teaching this tonight in my class. It's oh, we're, that's awesome. we're like night two into our new semester. And I find when you bring in these elements, right, all of the stuff that you found that is your inspiration, mm. if you let them overlap a little bit and you let some transparency and some opacity happen, what happens is you get neat colors that blend between so let's say you had a turquoise and a yellow and then when they're overlapped that you know when you have multiply on and you get that weird like i want to say it's tertiary what's that i can never oh, pronounce that word um, you know the word i'm talking yes, about yes i don't know how to please yeah. help me out chat you know what i'm talking about <laughs> treasury I, oh andrew can say the, it the so color good scheme. On, our, on our other show yeah, yeah i always lose it but there there is a new color almost created and i love that idea um, but also too, you got to be able to back it up. And I think that's the, that's the harder part, uh, being bold with a color palette that you show is great, but be prepared to tell why it is, if it's a game changer, if it's a little bit out there, right. If it's off on a tangent, yeah. and, and clients love it when you, when you sell them on stuff, you know, or your boss, you know, whoever, whoever you got to explain something to be that creative. I think that that has strong rationale and, and you win, you know? It is true. I do find like as long as I have like an explanation, like you could, they know I'm I'm thinking through, you know, yes. why why I made these decisions. Yes. Um, it's not just like this random thing that I'm I'm guessing. Like it's like a very thoughtful thing. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it usually is like, all right, you know, like, we'll, we'll try it. Like, and that, that is a fun way to, um, yeah, I guess kind of share yes. your process even with, with your client and have them mm-hmm. really trust you. Um, there it is. Tertiary. Ah, thank you for the extra pronunciation there. Yes. Chat always comes through. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, where do you teach at? I teach at Cal State Northridge here in Los Angeles. Oh, so that's awesome. We have a senior design class and there. It's such a cool thing to work with mm. young creatives at this point, because I think like they there's so much uncertainty. It's kind of like why we're all making a community here on Adobe as well. Like you want to learn from anyone who's a step ahead of you and then anybody that has knowledge you want to you want to help out the next person in line you know um absolutely i don't think it's uh we had a great conversation a couple nights ago and it was talking about how some artist of the past um talking even 10 15 years ago it felt like everybody had such a proprietary thing can't share how i do my work and now look at us we are streaming on all the time yeah right (laughs) where it's like and you can share this stuff and people will will not only gain knowledge from it, but the, it, I think it helps shape them into their own designer as well, you know? Yes. And it's such a, it's such like a really good community experience. Mm-hmm. And I find that, yeah, especially with like illustration and graphic design, like there's just like, I kind of, what I was saying earlier, it's, it's kind of like your, your signature or your fingerprint. It's not really like someone totally. can copy you exactly. Um, so it's fun to just share and yeah, yeah, learn from it, each other. Well, don't forget, like you're, you're, if you're seeing someone's work ethic and, and they're breaking down their process, I think you're more, more likely to make your own rather than be like, oh, I'm just going to take exactly what, what Lisa's doing right now. You know, it's like, no, I, 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 I think I can be inspired to find my own. Totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love that idea. Me too. Ooh, so this one has this one has both sage and cranberry in it. I think it's our first one, right? Oh With yeah. Both. Yeah. <laughs> looks yeah, good. I got the double double yes. going. And that looks cool. Oh yeah, these are looking really nice. Thanks. So yeah. guys, we are with uh, Lisa McCormick, and we are doing a graphic design slash packaging slash fresco slash. You name it. Uh, she's hand lettering some really cool badges that we're going to be using for a canned cider packaging. That is going to be our goal with this one, right? Yes. And I am almost done. I have one more badge to do and then Woo! hopefully we'll jump into that. color and layout and then um, we'll get to the, the really fun stuff shortly. So Very cool. Yeah, we're here from 12 to 2 both today, tomorrow. That's Pacific time. Uh, we'll be doing this again tomorrow, guys, so be sure to join us. If you're over on YouTube, there's a much better experience happening over at Behance. <laughs> so come on over there, join the chat. We'd love to say hi. So a few people said, oh, yeah, okay, I just came over from YouTube. I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> hey. Yeah, and feel free to ask any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, any other questions, guys? It doesn't even have to be about Fresco. It could be about getting clients. It could be like yeah. downtime. Um creative ruts oh what do you what do you do when 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 you're in that like and you and you're talking deadline right in front of you what what what's your cure yes well this is funny it's kind of what we were we were talking about before we went on i think you were saying that you love to do cooking um and yeah i like to do something else um so (laughs) yeah there's that's like that sums it all up right do something else do something else um (laughs) definitely I love running that's like one of my go-tos I try to run every day um uh I like playing the guitar you know just something that's just totally different um or even working on a different project just so I can like literally walk away um but I think even we were saying this too um I think another really helpful thing is to to get off the screen yes um go for a walk you know, I, we just bought a house. So now I finally have a garden, you know, so I'll be, I'll pull weeds or something that's just like physical and um, yeah, just kind of step away. And I'll even like think about the project in my head while I'm doing these things. And I feel like I can come up with different ideas that I wouldn't be able to if I was yeah staring at a screen, like under the pressure. 
That happens every time. I think every you time. can't help it, but like here you are, you you do something else, you're doing something else, but sometimes that great idea comes to you while you're doing something else. And totally. Right? Like <laughs> Yeah, or it's like when you're in the shower. It's like the best yes. ideas and you're like, I need to write this down right now. Yeah. It's funny how that happens. It, ha I think it's a natural thing too. I, I was watching something the other day where they were saying, um, because we don't, because of screens, because of so much connectivity in our lives, w w humans are not bored anymore. And boredom mm. is where some of the best ideas come from. Oh, I like that. And, right, yeah. and I'm like, isn't that like, it's just so interesting that I was like, wow, I never thought of that. The minute you go to any line or any place where people have to stand in line or something and you'll see a sea of people, Right. And I'm, I think I'm guilty of it every single time, but, um, giving yourself that moment to be bored, yeah. you will make solutions to things that are happening in your life at that time. You know? Yeah, that's so true. I do. I try to like be intentional about not having my phone on me sometimes. Like, yeah, like I'll often like leave my phone at the house and then go for a walk. That's even. a great idea. Yeah. Um, or like sometimes like I'll, my husband and I will go on the date night and we, yeah, we just leave our phones at home. Like we'll be out for gone for hours. I'm like, I, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> You're like, people happens. did that 20 years ago and we're right? all like, okay. <laughs> everybody survived without a phone in their pocket. Yeah. I know. I know. It's kind of interesting to think that, um, Here's what it's a few so people freeing. so a lot of people said they take a hike that's yeah. great too like just general time in nature i totally agree with that um i get to go for a walk take a nap and draw that's a great one uh carrie says as well love that um let's see what was that one question i saw kobe ask do you like do you work on box packaging too or mostly labels at this point in your packaging stuff yeah, um, I haven't done any box packaging yet at this point, so mostly labels. Oh, that would be a nice yeah. one. That would be. I'm definitely open to it. Yeah. That's always cool, too. I think there's a neat, anytime you can take your design and turn it to somewhat of dimension, like two-dimensional, you three-dimensional, you can look at, obviously, wrapping a cylinder is, sounds very easy, but then you're you're considering space i i always make yes. a printout and i'll put it i'll just tape it on the can just to see is it flowing with the with the structure right i did the same thing when i because when i um started this can design i i did design the whole like system layout as well so now okay. I, ha I have i made my own template that each yes. month i just do the artwork and colors but when like originally um designing um the template I, I printed out so many variations mm -hmm. and like nuances of that um which is super helpful yeah but i look because you don't you don't know you you know you gotta yeah, see it you, you don't see it yeah yeah it's the only way there we go looking good yes we awesome. got a nice repeat of that one right that was kind of cool didn't have to redraw it yeah so i just duplicated it and then um just transformed it super quickly and yes voila there's luca has just joined us what's up luca tell us where you guys are from i love to see i always love to see cities uh from chat tell us where you are watching from it's always cool to see that is fun yeah yep <laughs> Voodoo Val says, when I leave my phone at home, I just announced to everybody that I'm taking a 90s day. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes. A that. 90s day would be with the big brick phone, right? The big Motorola with the with the huge um, uh, antenna. That was... <laughs> yeah, that's true. That does not fit in your pocket. <laughs> so maybe that's right. You, no one took it with you. You know, that only stayed in the car most of that time, right? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, Kobe said he started putting labels on 3D models in Adobe Dimension. That's great. Ooh. You can see how things look on a cylinder. Just, and you could, yeah, because you could do the full rotation, okay, yeah. which is really good. I think it's a great shortcut too, if maybe you're working remotely or you know you don't have the printer right on hand. Um, I've been doing the exact same thing there, Kobe. That's great. I haven't used Adobe Dimension before. Oh my God. We might is have it... to do that. We might have to do that tomorrow. We might have yeah? to. Yeah, I, 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 right. can, I can walk you through. I'm we can take the it. label. Oh, it's so killer. It is it's awesome. a, It is a game changer. We got folks from Georgia. Kobe's from Tampa, uh, Tokyo. Wow, this is great. Charlottesville, Virginia, Ireland, Naples, Italy, Scotland, oh. Copenhagen, 
Johannesburg, South Africa. My gosh. Oh, what a, hey, what a everyone. <laughs> global team. Me. I know. This is great. Awesome. That's really neat. Now I tell went, now now I'm gonna say now that you told us where you're from, what's a what's a design, let's call it just influence that you really love about your hometown? What's mm. I love to know, even if it's cuisine or architecture or whatever it might be, give us some design inspiration that's specific to your town. That's cool. Yeah. What Mexico would you city. What, what would you say to that answer? About, LA, about living in LA? Yeah. Oh God, I know. What do you? It's 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 such a hodgepodge. It's like it's everything. Um, I, I think you, I love that you have. It's such a big town that if something's out there in the world, I, you can find an example of it here mm -hmm. and see it like live. Like that's cool. You, you know, which is great. Um, be it uh, a product, be it a an event, be it like uh, performing art or something. Uh, I think just having the exposure to a lot of these things is really is really cool. You know, um, and knowing you can go and see everything from nature to amazing yeah. street art to the murals around. We're finally. We, I feel like LA is finally an art community because of <laughs> this this incredible surge of, of of murals and city murals that are happening all over the world. It's pretty cool, you know. That's awesome. What about you? What what about Chicago? Yeah, I feel like Chicago. I mean, we're definitely known for like our obviously food, and um, I think a lot of really good music comes yes. out of here as well, like food, music, um, and kind of like, um, I mean, when I think of the average Chicago person like I don't like it's kind of like you're you're friendly but you're also like a little you're like kind of hard working yes. and a little, and a little and, there's a little edge yeah like we're pretty practical like mm -hmm. we you know like and so I think I um I do think that comes through in my designs like I like I uh yeah I'm not too flashy like I'm just kind of practical and yeah I like hard working and um I do have a lot of that like you know like side of me from just family uh of influence and um definitely love sports a lot it's and... all that chemistry of like your upbringing the city you grew up in and you can't yeah, yeah it's neat to have that flexibility in both sides of it you know like i love that part one of the the first time i went to chicago i literally came back I, it was probably the first time i bought really nice art to frame oh, and i cool. there was a beautiful place called blue chicago i don't know if it's still there but it was a jazz bar and mm -hmm. they sold all the original paintings that were made when it opened and they made prints out of them. And I, oh, wow. I, I still to this day have it like right behind my desk. It's like one of my favorite, like just reminds me of that. When you go to a new city, what you're experiencing That's and cool. the things that are very different about your hometown, you know? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so oh, I was gonna say, tell, tell us a little bit what you because you're, you're, you're making a big move here. I'm doing yeah, I'm making moves. I'm <laughs> making them in moves, here. Everybody. Um, so yeah, now I am. So I just finished here. I'll go back. I just finished um, getting my uh, badges together. So I, I vectorized my badges. And um, I just I saved them. I always I always like to make copies because layers are free. We're working digitally. Yes. So use that to your advantage. Um, but I just, I basically uh, have a copy of the original drawings, but then I went over here and duplicated it and made them a little bit larger because this is gonna be a little bit more accurate to the size of how they'll actually be on the can. Um, so now I'm, I'm saving that. And then this is the template of where my um, label will be. So I just have this sketched out. This is, Great. you know, it's Not almost the place, placeholder, right? Placeholder, perfect. Yes, and then um, I'm basically I'm going back to my original sketch where um, I'll actually copy this layer because I don't want this whole group on, and I'll paste it up here. Um, and I'm actually going to paste it underneath my template. So again, this is just a rough sketch, so it's not like exactly correct, but um, I want my I always like to see like what the front of the can is going to look like because kind of like what we were saying um it's a it's a cylinder so it's yes. what you when you're looking at the label flat it's very different than looking at it as a wrap so the most important side is that front side so those two and a half inches that you'll see yeah so i want to make sure just enough showing exactly. like right yeah so i kind of you know i'm just kind of lining it up and this is just again this is a quick just how do i I want something here and there. So, um, right. 
we'll just have that lined up again. I'll just turn down the opacity and put it down at the bottom. Turn these back on. Um, Great. I will ungroup that actually. Um, and um, and also I do, I am wanting to kind of have these all size the same size. So when I make them bigger, that's why I like to group them so that right. they just get sized up together. Um, so actually I am going to make it a little bit larger one more yeah. time. So I'm going to make sure. And also that. too, you want to make sure all, like you want to have the randomness of your sketch, but then you also want to make sure everything's readable, everything's legible. You're not covering up keywords, right? Exactly. Yeah. So there's, there's a little bit of a, um, science to how we're laying things out. Good. But, um, <laughs> yes. This there isn't all, know. this isn't all randomness. There's, there's, there's science here guys. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, you didn't know this isn't. <laughs> yeah, I love that a lot of people said they said they love going to their sports events, cultural diversity in San Antonio, great food, uh, lots of folk arts here. Love that idea, totally for sure. Uh, architecture in D.C., mm. American history, uh, American Museum, and African American History Museum. That sounds great. Um, yeah, the woods, gardens, hills, wildlife, foraging. Farmer's markets. Ooh, that's a great one. Because you know what I love about farmer's markets? It's almost the only grassroots things you get. Like grassroots has become like what even the biggest corporations are doing now. So like, right. right? <laughs> like, you know, I always laugh when you see the some of the biggest brands out there trying to do homestyle stuff. It's like, no, you're not homestyle. Yeah. Like I'm going to go to a farmer's market and see the real deal. Particularly that's for so like for branding and, and all the stuff that you get to work on. I, I love the idea of like, being able to see what when you see that really cool boutique packaging, you know, I think yours has that vibe too, because it's like, there's a lot of handcraftedness going into here. It's not found resources, just puzzled together. And I love right. that. I love that value it brings, you know, it's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, that is funny when big corporations try to say that something is grassroots. Yes. It's like, this is literally, I know you just never will be that. Like, I know. I know you like can't you can just, be a lot of other things, but just yeah. not that. You can't just rough it, roughen up your logo. And now it's like, you know, Oh, now it's the organic, um, you know, free range, <laughs> all that great stuff. You're like, come on. Yeah. So designers know other people might be fooled. Designers don't get fooled with that stuff. <laughs> so funny. Any other oh. questions, guys, on even like the process or the the we're talking a lot about packaging. We're talking a lot about um, fresco here. But is there any other questions regarding just, you know, finding the right client, uh, balancing work, you name it, like let us know. There we go. That looks good. It's fun seeing it come alive for the first few moments there, too, right? Yes. See, that's why you're going to love dimension. It like, oh, it almost, it, it's like someone took your, the can printed and went to a photo studio and gave, give, brings you back a picture of them in any perspective you want and lighting. And it just get you like, you're like, you show that to the client and they go like, they'll sign oh. off on that design, like first round. <laughs> wow. So is it, um, are there like mock-ups already installed or is it just like, yes. is, this is a cylinder shape? And... No, the, uh, both. You get okay. raw from scratch, you can build. You have a series of, oh my God, I think there's at least a hundred free models that are the most commonly used. Like they have oh. the, they have a can, they have like the pouch bag for like, you know, your typical food. They have like a Chinese takeout box. They have, um, oh my gosh, you name it, gift box um jars pump you know like a pump jar for like um uh, beauty products things like that oh wow and i don't you, know how i didn't realize yeah that it's that so awesome. incredible you ch you choose your surface you choose the finish you choose the color then you add the lighting you can add metallic if you want like let's say with this one here um like with most cans the cool thing you can do is you can knock out the white you know they put a white uh, underprint because they have to like make the can opaque, right? So yeah. if you were to put the ink right on the, the, the actual silver of the can, you get a little metallic in there. But what you can do now is a lot of printers are allowing you to make that white um, a tint. So let's say you do 50%. Now you're going to get this little shimmer in all of your colors and it's going to have a neat little metallic finish. Um, oh, and that wow. catches people's eyes like, you know, right on the shelf. So it's really fun to see what you can do with that. 
Yeah, that sounds amazing. I really don't know how I'm <laughs> missing out. <laughs> There's always, it always happens. There's so many pro, uh, programs to look at. I, I, I find it funny. Some people either know it by heart or they've never ever even opened it, you know? It's so funny. Yeah. yeah that is so true. It also allows you to share with your client, you can send them a, it creates a link, which is basically a URL and they open it up in a browser and they'll have a 3D model of your piece that they can spin and turn right on like their phone. It's pretty incredible. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. 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 I'm definitely going to be checking that out tonight. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. We're, we're moving into colors. She's showing us some color palettes, telling us, tell it. us a little bit about what you found. And I love this idea. You just made little of almost like paint swatches to pull from, right? Yeah, I, um, again, yeah, that's probably something from like my painting background where I do just like make little scribbles of colors and I kind of group them as you can see. Um, and I'm very familiar with a lot, like these are palettes that I use often. Um, Great. Like I said, I, I've hunted them down and um, I have used them. So um, I was kind of thinking of, um, turn this off real quick. Um, yeah, what, like what kind of feel do I want? So right. at first I was thinking to do more of this bright one down here because that's just been something I've been working on, but I've been there. It's very bright and um, I really like that for like the summer, but I feel like it's a little much for um, the, you know, November, fall type of vibe. Yes. Although I don't want to go like full out fall, but just something a little bit more muted over here. Um, uh, I, I really like these colors and I might even pull from these. These are more earth tones and whatnot. So um, it's just kind of, I, I kind of like to lay it out and um, just really play, see what's yes. working, what's not working. Um, is, I'm using is, the paint is, bucket tool to go fast. And any so, model you use, like let's say you're building this, I notice you have kind of roughly the same number of colors. Do you shoot for a red, a blue, a green, an orange? Uh, uh, an off white or is is there any model you you kind of start hand selecting or is it based on the project that you know you're going to need well for this i i know for sure the thing that i need the most is a red and a green because um, yeah. of the cranberries and the sage um I, I feel like i actually don't usually use those two colors well i use red a lot but i don't usually use green um and so these are kind of some of the palettes that i've made that does incorporate a red and a green excellent um, and um, yeah, but yeah, I, and I do like the more limited color palette look. Um, yeah. I don't want to have a million different colors. I want to have it a little bit more um, structured, I guess. Yeah. Um, it just helps with it feeling like it's all flowing together, I think. That's probably one of my, my bigger color issues is like not knowing when to like, I'm like, I have my five, can't incorporate that sixth or seventh color, don't need it. Like, yeah, because don't you feel like sometimes you feel as the artist like, oh, I don't have enough variety on this. It's looking boring, but it's I think that a lot of times it's just because it's you looking at it so much before anybody else. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's so true. Yeah. Um, or even like sometimes it's like, oh, I, I ran out of colors and now I'm going to have to almost choose a weird color for this. Exactly. Thing. Totally. Yeah. Not right. But then yeah. you do it and you're like, oh, that actually makes it a lot mm -hmm. more interesting because <laughs> yep you know, that person's blue now, you know, like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> but it, it actually, it works, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, there's, there's no color police out there, or maybe, the, maybe there are a few in, in chat, but you know what I mean? <laughs> there's no color police out there. Yeah. So this is neat too. So they can zoom in, get in some of those, you know, spots there within the fonts. Yeah. That looks great. It's yeah. really neat to see, like, to me, there's something so satisfying about seeing hand-drawn line art being filled with the color like all of a sudden oh, yeah. you're like, oh my gosh it's starting to look great it looks so cool oh thanks yeah it's fun to just i i just try to kind of spread the colors out and around the piece um so that it feels pretty balanced so, yes kinda... and all the while too are you keeping in mind maybe is the background color something completely um only on the background or will it be something that's in the illustration as well you know, it's funny you say that. I, I, I'm not sure yet. And sometimes I do like to play with the background color last. Um, yeah. I'm kind of thinking I might want to do a neutral or like almost like a brown or green, mm. some type of yeah. earthy um, feel. Um, 
but yeah, sometimes, I mean, it'll, it'll depend. Like sometimes if I do use a background color, um, that's already in the illustration, then, um, I, I try to use it very minimal in the illustration. Like I, I do like the background to stand out, mm -hmm. um, so that none of the illustration gets like washed up, but, um, correct. Yeah. Yeah, Val's, yeah. Di Val's digging that blue. I love it. It has that kind of like, <laughs> it, it works with the sage really well. I think finding, like, do you have any tips on finding the complementary color? Like a lot of times you're like, that blue is very reliant on what that green looks like, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, think, I mean, again, I, I think it's just, honestly, it's, it's. Um, I guess I kind of did my homework earlier with like actually looking for these colors. Sure. Um, and so now it's like, I know that these will always work together, um, if that makes sense. But they, I mean, even you can kind of see that this is very earth tone, um, yeah. com in comparison at least to like these, um, where these are all pretty saturated. Um, gotcha. And uh, so there, there is like almost like an underlying consistency to like, these are, a little, these are way more earth tone and dark um, yeah. up here. So it's, it's kind of like pulling from the same vein of what's, what's almost like the undertone of the color. Um, if, if I'm explaining that Makes well. sense, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's just chance. Sometimes it's just trial and error. Like, I mean, it, I, I, it's so hard to find that right. And I, I always, what I love to do is I love to send it to other designers that, you know, I have a, mm. I'm on a few good Slack channels with folks and, and Discord. And it's neat to be like, just sending something to someone and saying, what do you think? Like, am I on, I, I need, I need some eyes on this, right? Absolutely, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, even yeah, in chat, um, let me know if if you all think that this is working mm, or not yeah. working. Love to hear your comments. You know what's neat too? We were thinking with the background color. You this could be a fun one. You can try so quickly and just not have a background color and and have your have it look like the stickers are right on the can. You know, oh, like right yeah. on the on the silver, and you got this cool contrast between the muted, uh, almost like printed stickers right on metallic. You know, it could be kind of a fun one. That would be really cool. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I yeah, do well, think because this does have like a little bit of a pop of color to it that it would be fun to have some type of like, like neutral or like you're saying silver, mm -hmm. like metal um, background. That's yeah, really cool. or even adding in like whatever your color is, you add that slight texture of like a wood grain, you know, or something like Ooh. that. Could be yeah. kind of fun or the leather like you know if, because i think when i first see this too i think of it on like an old luggage or some or, or an old book and yeah you're talking about knowledge right like this is like a perfect throw-in i love that yeah there needs to be some grit <laughs> so actually i am going to this is what i like to do sometimes with colors too like i just kind of showed said like there's i have some almost like rules to each color palette where you know this has like a very similar it's earth tony, but it still has, um, it's almost like a, in the middle where there, there, it's a brighter earth tone palette, yes. right? Like yes. it's, it's not all out, like, like some of these are much more brown and whatnot, but then down here we have like a very saturated, almost like neon, like, um, neon palette. So I do sometimes like to like stick with one palette, but then pull from pull one or two colors from a different one to just kind of see how it yes. works. So yeah. um, even I was going to do this um, pink over here, this guy, um, but I think I'm going to actually try this one instead um, mm -hmm. and just see like, you know, like how that pops. It might be too much, but um, that sometimes just makes it uh, just a little bit different. I like the little pop of that. Like I, if you're using it wisely and kind of like, almost as this little fun highlight color it does yeah. kind of work i mean they're still in that zone um yeah can't always play by the rules right <laughs> right you can't <laughs> it's too boring that way exactly and i do i love pink and red together that's like for whatever reason that's my jam i love um, that like that color combo so i think that might be too bright down there um because it's a lot of pink but not we'll too see. bad though. Yeah, not too bad. I know you now. Yeah, because of that, how much space it's filling, you know, it could be. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. totally. It looks great. Just a good reminder for everybody. We are here with Lisa McCormick and we are doing fresco packaging, fresco design, fresco um, fun hand illustration. And this is being turned into a label for 
the Lost Boy Cider Company, correct? Yes, Lost Boy Cider. I love that logo. I got I, you showed it when you showed like the. I think it might be on maybe on your Behance too, but like that logo is just perfect. It totally reminds me Peter of that Pan. vibe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cool looking. Yeah. Well, it was really cool. I know I shared a little bit earlier, but. Um, this actually is my cousin's company. So um, Tristan and Katie, they, uh, Tristan was a banker for 20 plus years and always had this dream of, of opening um, a cidery and mm. really spent years planning it before he finally jumped, uh, made the jump. And I mean, he, he hired like this craft um, cider maker who like was from Switzerland. He moved him to the US and like they, wow. they make everything in house. They've been blowing up. They're they're in the um, the what is it the MLB stadium in yes. DC and like in all the all oh, the nationals. Yeah. yeah. So they're only they've only been around for about a year and a half, I think, and um, they're absolutely crushing it. Good um, to hear. It's so. always so. It's always stories like that. Um, people leaving the most like one hundred and eighty degree job. Oh, to couldn't into, be more different. To start some <laughs> beverage company. I, it's really, really something. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So it's fun, though, because he's very open to just, like, really having fun with everything. Like, the packaging. Yeah. The, yeah. Know, having fun events. So yeah. um, he lets me really run with crazy ideas sometimes, which is awesome. Some of these folks, and I have a lot of clients in this world, too. They're the, some of the most passionate, hardworking yeah. people. And I think they become some regardless of its family or not right or friends um it's they make for some of the best clients because i think they really appreciate the creative work you're going to do um because it's really their it's it, in most cases it's their money it's their it's everything about you oh, right it's yeah them, everything on the line you it's know? their baby you mm -hmm. know in, in a lot of ways yeah um yeah it's really cool Ooh, crystal's saying she's excited because she's starting her first day of school tomorrow at the Academy of Art University. It will be her very first year. Awesome. Wow. Congratulations. That sounds Crystal. awesome. What's uh, what's your dream job, Crystal? I'd love to know what kind of so the first thing I ask students because it helps to understand how to like prep the class basically. Yeah, because <laughs> you're a professor. Right? Yeah, but I love to know like what like what what are you hoping to get into, uh, Crystal? Let us know. Mm. Oh, Lamont says he has had the Lost Boys cider before, and they are in Alexandria, Arlington, Virginia area. Yes, Arlington. sweet. Yes. That's so awesome. I yeah. love that. There you go. Wonderful. So are you actually, uh, is the logo done, or are you just, are you actually making a fun version of it? Oh, so, I mean, this is just a really terrible sketch of the logo here. <laughs> so, so is that, it just that the placeholder not, again? This is just placeholder. Okay, so gotcha. Again, like this is honestly, I'll do the actual, um, all of this like typesetting I'll do in Illustrator. Yes. This is just a quick, um, just playing with colors right now. Good. Just seeing oh, good, what, good, good. what's working, what's not working. So we're Wonderful. almost done with this. And then I'll jump into Illustrator, hopefully in like, Two minutes or so. Good. All right. um, we are looking good. Yeah. I just have to really pick what colors I think will be working for the background and the in the um the ingredients and the square and, and logo. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So I I actually do kind of like black because I think it's like a, a really clean background and it's more of like a it's not it's not like a, a pure black. Yeah. It's like yeah. A charcoal. Oh, and Crystal saying she would love to do packaging design. That's great. I, That's awesome. You got two <laughs> two huge fans of packaging design right here. We we couldn't agree more. Such yes. a fun area to be in. Totally. Oh yeah, that looks really really cool. Yeah. So is that this is also another hard thing is that I want it to not be competing too much. Um, yes. Like you know, so there's definitely a lot going on. Um, mm. on a little bit. That's got a good vibe to it. Um, I am curious to even like play with like a brown or something. Yeah. Let's what see. do you guys think? Any suggestions you're seeing that would make for a really good background color? Yeah, that's kind of, I think even more like almost like a terracotta. I think you've got one there right at the top, mm, like two over one? that terracotta right over like there. And then the one right above, right under the W. Um, right under, oh, yes. Yeah. Like that terracotta, that kind of has a nice vibe to it. 
Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, I do like that a lot. Mm-hmm. And that feels pretty like warm and Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving esque. Yes. Very gravy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the puns. <laughs> yeah, the rust color. There we go. I like that too. That looks really neat. Ooh, yep. Everyone's digging this. They're really kind of now it's okay. it's so neat when it starts coming together. Oh, <laughs> it's like the best part. You feel so validated. You're like, oh, that pin work. Right? Yes. It is really fun. <laughs> it worked. It does feel really, really good. Um, I'm also realizing I forgot to put a highlight in here. Oh. Because that is turning the wrong color. Um, let me pull this. Boom. Cool. Um, hmm. So I do feel like that's this uh, this like charcoal is a little much. Mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of like keeping that like this this cream white. Um, I think that might help things pop. But yeah, what what does everyone think in the um, chat? Yeah. Do you want? Someone um, had mentioned the cream, the rust color. We tried that. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see the terracotta. Love that. I just love that word. It's just such a great way to. I think one day when I start a, some weird business, it'll be called Terracotta. <laughs> I thought you were going to say when you started a band. Oh, like, there, oh, there you awesome. go. That too. <laughs> Even better. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Terracotta. Terracotta. <laughs> Sounds like a punk band from the 90s. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Oh, yeah. That See, the charcoal still has that, like, because that has a bit of the sage kind of green in that charcoal. Yeah. Like, you can see it's based off of a greenish color. Which yeah, is absolutely nice. yep. some, some really good, good undertone this is even a little bit more green well, that looks fun probably too much and this is the first one you've done that is in this zone of the the floating badges right like the, the randomness it right? is yeah, yeah i haven't i haven't done one of these yeah. yet surprisingly it um, might even be fun like once you're said and done like you tear one corner of one or maybe you you give it the illusion like one of the corners is rolling up you know, mm, you know, like totally. to show the, not only the randomness of it, but like the kind of haphazard of it, which yeah, is kind like, of always neat, you know, as if it's like a real like um, a little scratch or a little scratch overlay. Mm-hmm. Totally. There's so many fun little ways you can once you get to that point where you're kind of like the core work is done, then you mm. get that time of play, you know, it's all like the, all the little tweaks. Mm-hmm. Yes. It looks really, really good. Thanks. So I'm awesome. also. I am kind of feeling like that pink was a little bit like overload. So I, I just took that out and substituted it back for the regular um, pink from this palette. Oh, gotcha. Okay, there you go. A little more, I'd say it just has that more uniform, you scan it and not one thing, everything feels comfortable. Yes. Now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little, little more toned down. Um, yeah, it looks like the charcoal was getting a few votes there too, which was good. Okay or the greenish, what we called it, the greenish charcoal and the terracotta. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So is it, so not not this What one. do you think? So we're going, okay, here we so go. So we chat. have, chat, I'll, chat I'll is up to this, you. Go for I'll it. I'll call this one black, even though yep. it's not fully. Um, and then we have, let's the ter- see. The terracotta? Yes. All right, guys, so black or terracotta as the overall background because we love this off-white for the um, square badge and the logo down below. So we need some, we got to get some votes. Yes. And, and then we have, it. I guess, this blue one too. But I. Yes, we need, a, like we a, need a poll, Val. We need a poll. Give it to us. <laughs> yes, Val. Yes. So we're going for the black charcoal or the terracotta. What do you think? That's the black charcoal that she's showing right now. And then we're going to show you the terracotta in just a second as well. Yes. Yeah, so they're on a gonna... little they're on a little delay. Ooh, first one's in with Carrie. He says black, black. All right. Leather suitcase color. <laughs> 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 Do like the green. Uh, slightly, uh, we got blue. The reddish okay. color makes sense since the cranberry flavor. Mm. True. But like but also when you hit the that charcoal, your cranberries pop a little bit more. Ooh, that brown's kind of nice too. This this does feel more of like that leather suitcase vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Blue one. Okay, we are really getting the whole spectrum. <laughs> yep. I think oh, no. you, you're going to have to make that ex- executive decision. Now. All right, so you've, all right. I can do it. This is this is when you're at the client meetings, guys, and and there's there's uh, there's no rhyme or reason amongst your clients, right? It's right. Designed by committee. Mm-hmm. It's the whole point of having try to narrow it down to one point person when you're working with a client. 
totally that's like my number one advice because then you'll you'll get a definite answer but this looks i i think you can't go wrong i really do like both of them yeah oh thanks i i think i'm gonna do black because that it. is just i don't think i've done black yet for um for this uh Good. this can series and i'm also noticing There's that was nice there yep you can kind of just quickly look at everything make sure it's all it's all pretty good. Okay, awesome. So then I'll just, um, actually now I'll be sending this over into Illustrator. Um, and I know show them how you do it. It's the simplest thing you've ever seen. It really is. Yeah, I so think I think we're good, Val. I think we're good. Yeah, she's she's gonna stick with that. Thank you guys. Oh, awesome. Oh, sorry, I, I did see black. Was there more votes? I think we got a few more there, but I think when I saw it too, like to me, I think your illustration sings so much more as this Dark with background. this background yeah cool hey let's let's let them pop because you know the client's gonna say lisa these have to pop <laughs> so you're, that, you're, make, yes. you're making them pop right now <laughs> let's do it that's true awesome well yeah i can i can show everyone really quickly how to send this over to illustrator it's extremely it. easy so we just will click this button in the top right and Boom. What's Sounds that? Th illustrator. What's that third thing down from the top? <laughs> that's, that's oh, yeah. What is that? <laughs> I just think it's great. It's so the amazing. Actual that, button. Yeah. But it's so neat that you get this like you send to Illustrator from your iPad. And the minute you go to your desktop, it's there waiting for you. It's so nice. And this is yeah. all vectorized. And actually, I'm realizing sometimes it takes a little while when I have all of my um, actual sketches uploaded because those are bigger files. So Hopefully it'll take a second. Okay, yeah, document set. Awesome. There we are. Look yeah, at that. Now, so now we're gonna move over to switch. her Illustrator screen, yep. and we're gonna see how how easy this is to kind of move and manipulate. It's so it's so neat to like. I love this idea of like you can talk about getting away from your desk. Take that. Take your iPad. Hang out in the outside somewhere. Do all that fun art, and then now you're back at your office. Right. Isn't yeah. that great, guys? It is something else. It's yes, so Lamont, nice. it is that easy, believe it <laughs> or not. Look at that. I love it. So um, obviously some of these are off of uh, the screen a little bit. So I'm just going to quickly cut it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and make a box around here make sure everything is lining up real nice and um, cool. Select everything. Command yep. seven. Oh, I did oh. not do that. Ooh, you had some, you had some uh, outsiders uh -oh. there. Yeah. So let me actually bring that to the front, right? Yeah. There we go. Lamont, how were you actually doing it? Lamont says, hold the phone. I've been doing it all wrong my entire life. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> were you just saving it as a JPEG or something and then like bringing it in and auto tracing? Because, like, you, you know, you'll obviously lose all of the little nuances by doing it in that way. This way you get, she's bringing in the vector art right from the iPad. Oh, that looks wonderful. So um, here's a nice clean box. And so I'm actually just going to copy this and I have my template already pulled up. Yes. Um, so here's this um, screen. And as you can see, this is from a previous um, design that I made, which is extremely quirky. Yeah. <laughs> we literally have it um apples and grapes hanging out so <laughs> uh i'll actually delete this great now and i'm going to just paste this right here and fit that right into the little template make sure the bleed is all good and then we'll just send this to the back so Perfect. um yeah this part is pretty easy um well i think we'll be able to get through this pretty quickly um i basically there you go so I, I need to change um, some of the different um, text in here. So like I said, I, I made this template for myself so that I can um, kind of quickly edit yeah. the flavor. So it's a device. And what's great about this too is tell them a little bit more about the, the the benefit of having yourself set up with this template, right? Like it's the, you, you're, you're doing all the work once and exactly. then it's there for you every time, right? <laughs> yes. So that work. Uh, smarter, not harder. Yes, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, um, so I did design this all, um, but like you said, I designed it one time. I, I came up with the the system, 
Right. And then um, now there's just a couple things that I will, um, you know, just kind of fill in and change. And then um, uh, I'll I'll save this. And then when I do my next one, I'll save a copy of this and then import the new information. So it's kind of just this. Um, this process is honestly super quick um, yeah. because it's already pretty much all there. Um, yes. The artwork is really the thing that I focus on the most um, at this point. And that by doing this too, um, you know everything is lining up. You know when these are on shelf next to another flavor, you've got everything. In fact, just those color changes are what make it like, oh, this is obviously a series, but it is so structured and so the same. Yes, totally. It's yeah, it, it all lines up and, and has a uniform look, even though um, obviously the artwork is super different on everyone. Um, which is fun. So, and that's the that's been a huge trend now. Is like almost leaving this blank canvas, right? You you anchor the area where you have sage advice. You anchor the mm-hmm. logo, but you allow for all that freedom to almost be like this blank canvas, canvas. every time you do something, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's and that cool. is what's really fun about like even like the drink industry. Like what we were saying is, people want that. You know, like they they yeah. want you to just have something that really pops and is mm-hmm. different every time and unexpected and yeah yep. so you know ne- you never change you're, you're staying on board with fonts and everything like that just exactly. for your system correct great exactly that looks cool so now it's about populating it with the right terminology the right copy and everything else and then obviously maybe picking some unique color choices from your palette as well right yeah so i just kind of like to see like what um i I try to pull a few different colors that are from the illustration and kind of see like what would work as like these larger color blocks um like what's working what's not working um so right now i don't i don't know if this is quite working but we'll just kind of i'm very like i just like to see so i'll I'll yeah just kind of play and see what's working And it's nice to know you have, like you have your darker colors, you have your lighter colors within the palette. You have that accent pop color that's gonna be cool. Um, And that way you you know like you're gonna have enough contrast between whatever that color is and maybe the white. You know, you wanna wanna like, you're not gonna put like the light yellow as your background because it'd be very difficult to read with the white. Right, yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. You always always wanna make sure it pops at least um, a good amount. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's a great workflow to do. And then I love the little scale idea you have there at the bottom too, like to just kind of hint to maybe some of the notes or how yes. it tastes, right? Yes. Yeah, this is great. Oh, so I'm so thirsty, like the sage and cranberry, <laughs> just like it's, it's, it's like, well, I'm already in Christmas season because of that. It's so right? good. Right? You know? It sounds so good. Yeah. What do, I'd love to chat. What's your favorite flavor combos? Mm. I, I gotta admit, like peanut butter and apples to me is like one of my favorite things of all time. Like as a food or like a, a drink just taste, flavor? Taste, just taste combination. Like, yeah. Not okay. so much drink. Yeah. Like, I was gonna say, I don't think I've had that as a drink. Yeah. Complimentary, complimentary flavor. Two, mm. What would it be? I know like a lot of people love bananas and bananas and peanut butter is a great one too. That's a great one. This is looking good. Yeah, that that red's really popping off to the right. Looks great. Yeah, I'm almost thinking, I feel like maybe keeping the um, black is one of the main colors. I was thinking mm-hmm. pulling the green because it's like referencing the sage and the, yes. um, but it kind of looks a little bit too Christmassy. So I'm like, maybe I should yeah. do black, cream, and red. I think that's a little bit less. Christmas Do you try time. to keep, like, I didn't notice what you had prior to it, but where you have sage advice in the red, is that typically always the same color of your color block on the right? Oh, that's a good question. I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, I was thinking, because, like, the, right? And people, even the average consumer, it kind of picks up on these things now, which is so neat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely pick three colors and then I play with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't always know the order. I kind of just play with it until it Good. feels right. But um, yeah, it, it, it might be like, I would actually, <laughs> that would actually be really funny if it was just like subconsciously doing that. Cause it's like, Oh, you're right. Work. That would tell you a lot. Here's some, <laughs> here's some color combination or flavor combinations. We got coffee and vanilla. That's a great Ooh. one. Coffee and chocolate. 
too. Oh, and then yeah. I love it. Uh, Gareth just wrote coffee and coffee. <laughs> that, hey, these are my people. <laughs> yep. Salt and chocolate. Oh my God. Mm. Like that, that flaky salt over like dark yes. chocolate. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, mm. okay. How much longer do we got? <laughs> right. <laughs> we got salt and chocolate. We had fries and chocolate shakes. That's a good one. Ketchup and rice. And then of course, don't judge me. All right, Kevin. We'll we'll, we'll, As we'll I trust you my on head that. Yeah. I mean, everyone's got their own yep. thing. Chocolate and pistachio. That's a good one. Mm. Kelly wrote lamb and tuna fish. Okay. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll trust you on that. Yeah. Um, Voodoo Val just goes, can I just say sushi? <laughs> yes, I, I agree with that. There I you go. Sushi. What kind of sushi, Voodoo Val? Yeah, because sushi is good taste. Yeah, give us yeah. more specifics there, Val. Um, chocolate and raspberry. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that Broccoli. is Broccoli. Yep. Macaroni and cheese with kimchi. I've heard of that. Ooh. I saw that on a cooking show the other day. That sounds really That's good. a good one. Cheese and broccoli. Yes, cheese and tomatoes. Chocolate and mint. See, look. So when 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 they open a confectionery thing over at Lost Boy, you've got, <laughs> right. all, you've got all these great ideas, right? It might be next. I mean, they're very open to, mm -hmm. to yeah. new things. So. Yeah, I'm also a big fan yeah, of I, this. This might be all seasons. Seasons like what you add to a dish, but mm, um, yeah. basil, Lars? basil and garlic. Oh yeah, just like are the founding the two stages I start almost every dish with. I love it. Ooh, yes. Butter and soy sauce. I've never tried that combination. That's that'd be kind of interesting because you're adding like a little fattiness to the soy sauce. That's a good one. Yeah, that's really cool. That's Cheese fun. and French fries. <laughs> Cheese and everything. <laughs> Do you use um, recolor artwork at all? Great segue there onto uh, Adobe Illustrator. Have you used recolor artwork much? I haven't actually. You know what's interesting? Like, do you have just do a duplicate of your um of your badges? Are they? I think you have them all grouped. Oh right? yeah. So if you just do that, do a duplicate. Like in here. Yeah. So you're not messing with your uh, the other one, right? Mm -hmm. Select that, and then you go to object, and then edit color, or no, it's over in edit. I'm sorry, edit. Oh. Edit colors. There you go. Where is... Keep going down a oh, little bit. Oh, edit colors. Here we there go. go. Edit, and then go artwork. recolor artwork. And then I think you were going to have to do... Oh, go to advanced options there in the bottom. Okay. Let me move this over so there we can you go. see. Advanced Glad you options. brought this up. This one's really cool. So it's breaking down all of your, your colors. See where it says like edit and assign at the top? Uh, uh, in that you have yeah. assign is blocked. Hit the edit one. Okay, perfect. Right there. And then you can, let's see, I think you are in, let's see, are you locked? Go to, what you could do now is hit that little lock icon. It's right above the none. The, it like a link, it looks like a link button. Oh, yes. Click on that. Now, okay, so uh, I think, does that mean it's locked or not? I can, uh, link, yeah, click it again. Now okay, start moving, now start moving any of those, those, um, those bubbles. Yeah. So spin it around now, Ooh. look at your art. See how your art's changing as oh, you go. Oh, wow. And what's neat is you can actually go and like yeah. go into the color wheel and be like, oh, I want to make these look a little more Easter. I want to make these look a little mm. more fall. So it's a universal way of changing all the colors and yet they keep their that harmony because you've already established that in the art that you had. That's awesome. Isn't that killer? Wow. Yeah. And I'll I think if you if you go to like that color wheel, uh, the right to the left above the hue above H, there's like a little color wheel. Um, uh, let's see to the right. left of the color wheel. There's like a smaller color wheel. That one right there. Yeah. Click on the next one over. Oh, this guy. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So you can, you get to see little breakdowns of the color as well. Um, and then that slider move that, that horizontal slider move that. Yeah. So it gets darker. Like tonals. Yeah. And then go all the yeah. way to the right and now you can brighten them up a little bit Super too. Super saturated. Isn't that oh, neat? Man. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome, though. That's like a super really weird. quick, easy way. Mm -hmm. Just and you and you can bring in a you can bring in a photograph. Let's say you bring in a JPEG. Just place it in the artboard, and then you can use an eyedropper now, and it will pull colors from the photo and recolor your your things as well. Wow, just that's like awesome. Too much is going on, but isn't that neat? Like, <laughs> so if if let's say a client comes and says, "Hey, we we're doing this, but we're gonna we're gonna drop it in Easter time." There could be a quick way to do it right there. You have all the Absolutely. art ready to go. 
Isn't that cool? That's some, awesome. It's almost a glow in the dark, like like it's a whole other vibe. Now it looks like a, a, a rave. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, now I'm definitely ruining it. <laughs> I yeah. think it took it too far, but that's really nice to know though. Isn't that great? Yeah. I I've think, used oh, go ahead. Sorry. I go was ahead. gonna say I've used this for like um changing or finding pantone colors like I, i've yes. done in here oh, right but to the I book yeah exactly but i haven't used it um for the recoloring mm -hmm. that's super cool though that's awesome to know yeah i love that like anytime someone shows me something like that I, it makes me think of all the other things i have not figured out yet about this program it, right <laughs> it is endless you know, Absolutely. it's just unbelievable, unbelievable. And they're still talking about flavors in chat. I love it. <laughs> but it, I, I feel like it makes it so fun that there, it, it really is endless. And like, even like no one has like arrived, you know, like you can always learn from people and Correct. there's always like more to learn. And it's just, yeah, it, it's Yeah, fun. yeah, this is great. Though. Looking good. I love, so looks like we, I, we changed it, right? You had the, you had it there. What's the fi what's our final solution? Are we going to go with the that kind of hot red on the right, or I think you just had it where it was the natural, a little bit. I know I, I'm I'm playing around. This is Good. what I usually like to go through and do. Yeah, so keep going. Kind of playing with green. Now I'm just command seeing to show everyone what I was doing. Um, yeah. I kind of I think I gravitate naturally towards bright colors. In case you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm like, oh, red, yes. But sometimes it. Uh, it might be a little much, but yeah. What What do you all think in the chat? Do we like the red? Do we Do we want to tone it down? Um, oh, there's also the green option. Yeah. Um, we can do the natural. And I think too, you got to consider you're you've got quite a wrap. Okay. Like you're not going to see that until the very backside. Oh of no, it. you don't see that yeah. at all until yep. you're yeah. Yeah. Let's see what uh, it'll give them a few seconds, and I'm sure they'll pop in with some some yes. good suggestions there. But I think like you can't really lose at a certain point, like, and I think that's just where like when do you decide? How how do you get to a point where you're like, I'm this is it, I'm I'm ready to show the client. Like, yeah, you know, I, it's a hard decision a lot of times. Yeah, I usually I just play around with it a little bit, and then um, it's I mean it's definitely kind of like a, a gut feeling of like okay this feels good, and then um, yeah so there's it's usually just like I like just trying different options just to see um, yes and just playing like that's I'm I'm such a visual person so um, but I, I am also I'm decent except for today <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm a very decisive normally i'm usually like okay yep that's good you know like i, I have that gut um but today i am a little bit indecisive um oddly it's also doing it with a with an audience and doing knowing that you know trying to be instructor instructional too it leaves you open for a lot more interpretation and, and like i think yeah. most of the time you're just so like on deadlines or whatever you really want right. to get something on so it's like Freezing. i think knowing when to call it that day and just try and submitting it to the client it's it is a it is an art form but like you get more confident every time you do it you know yeah absolutely yeah so I, I would say this is a, a a bit more of a subdued version um yep. so that's kind of nice i think that's um that would be a good kind of like we're talking about like a, it's like the fall starting yep. to be winter um so a little bit less saturated colors um although i do love a good red so i'm also i know <laughs> i know i'm also very open to this so i am curious what everyone thinks um in the chat if if we like the red background or if we should stick to the natural um yes. like cream i kind of like the natural to be honest yeah. with you, okay. I think um, I think okay. the especially the Lost Boy Cider logo being so heavy on that red makes me feel a little a like lot. almost Halloweeny. It feels yeah. like you know. Um, yeah, we don't want that's that. A, if that's a a, rear, a weird world word, <laughs> sorry there. Um, and I think also too, a few people had some some comments on on contrast too. And mm. I think sometimes when you have lighter text on a, or heavy text on the light it's a little more natural to read i think like people are more uh easy they're not like whoa that's a lot of copy like to me it feels very inviting to read and and a lot and lamont bring up brought up and kobe the accessibility of packaging oh. now it's such a people are really talking a lot about 
you know, accessibility and other things? Are things easy to read? Are we putting mm -hmm. uh, things large enough for people to see if it's a safety concern or something like that? That's why, like, the governmental warning on a lot of these things, it has to be a certain size, yes, you know, which definitely. is like, which setting it in your template is fantastic too. Um, and then also your the UPC code. I know a lot of a lot of people have switched to this has to be on a white background just so there's never any fear of the UPC code not not being uh, read at retail. Yeah, yeah. I usually I I make sure that's always either black or white depending mm -hmm. on the background. Um, but yeah, those yeah. are all really good things to think through. Yeah, it looks um, like natural got most of the votes. I think yeah. for sure. Um, I love it. I mean, this this when you I another thing too is to back away from your screen and look at it yeah. from right. Like we we're always like this with our designs. Yeah. And if you guys can take that moment, and I did it the other day with a logo, and I saw something so like apparent that I did not see when you're looking at it in the details. You know, absolutely. That's oh, so this cool. is fun. So this is a great little setup for yes. the mockup, right? So now I also have my template that I've made. Um, as you can see, this is the same uh, uh, can design from the last um, last one. And I wanted to see if I can quickly throw in, um, import our um, design that we just did. So let me just, hopefully with the last couple minutes that we have, yeah. left, I'll, I'll be able to throw this up. We still got about 15 or so. Okay. Awesome. And guys, don't forget, we will be back here tomorrow again on Wednesday. No, Thursday. Today is Wednesday. Um, boy, this week's already <laughs> flying by. It's crazy. It really is. Uh, we're here from 2, I'm sorry, 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll be doing some more stuff tomorrow along with Lisa. And don't forget, you can always watch Adobe Live even when you're offline, guys. There's a library of stuff to check out on their YouTube page. All everything that's ever done live is always there immediately. So don't forget that. And you can now host your own live stuff. You could do it right on Behance and they're encouraging all of you guys to try this. Uh, like we were saying earlier, you could do it right from your Fresco. I think Fresco is the first app to take advantage of it. You can live stream right from your iPad, which is just the coolest thing ever. And it even uses the camera if you want to have your face on there. So give it a try. Uh, they're encouraging everybody to give it a shot. Awesome. Ooh, awesome. So we're getting this in. So you're you're bringing it in as a linked image and just dropping it in and replacing and now you get to move it around per can right where it exactly. goes. Exactly. Yeah. So this just really lets us visualize, um, you know, how it'll actually look in person. Right. Um, and this is also like a fun marketing material um, for the company itself and also for my portfolio. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a really fun, easy way to mock things up. Great. That looks good. Yes. So let's, and then just try to make sure everything's lined up pretty similarly. Okay, cool. And then I actually, I also, um, did want to ask the chat um, to vote on what flavor um, they want me to design for tomorrow. So I don't know when we want Ooh. to do that, but I did want Let's, to we can, throw we, can, we can throw it out there right now. What do you get? So any any direction, any uh, specifics they've got to be? Is it like, dude, is it both fruit? Could it be fruit and herb like what we've done today? So I, I actually, I will, um, all of these are going to be real cans. So um, even like this one, this will be available in November. So I, I um, am pulling from the list of cans uh, that are coming out. Oh, great. Um, within the next year. So I, I have um, two different flavors to choose from, if that's all right. Ooh, um, I also okay. can do a, a fully just made up one. Um, but I thought it would be fun to kind of have the chat. Um, have yeah, for the real and, ones. Yeah. yeah totally. Okay. So what are the, the two choices are, and we'll label them number one and number two, and then that way you guys can do a quick vote. Awesome. So what's number one? So the first one is called firecracker Ooh. and, <laughs> um, it's the ingredients are cherry lime and blueberries. Um, and I think this is going to be for July. So this okay. is actually, um, it'll be a summer month one. Um, and then, the next one is called Feel the Beat. With Feel the Beat. Beat, B-E-E-T. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, and it's with pomegranates and beets. And um, this will be coming out um, 
in January. So it's kind of like the new year's resolution. Um, everyone, you know, hits the gym for a month and, uh, <laughs> Good. I have some fun ideas for that. That's like great. 80s so, workout theme. Oh, um, that would be amazing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So we've got number one chat is firecracker and that's a cherry lime blueberry one. And number two is going to be a feel the beat. And that is beet and pomegranate pomegranate so those are your first one is firecracker two is feel the beat give us a vote one or two one or two that's for tomorrow uh while we're waiting for that great question from lamont can you bring mock-ups from dimension into photoshop you can because you can mm -hmm. export the whole point of it is you export this rendering of your final layout and design and that can be a psd so it can even be layered so once you open up that file, you can mess with your background, you can mess with your shadows, you can mess with your forefront, you can mess with the lighting. So again, yes, you can do all of that in Photoshop, which is really, really um, fantastic to do. I do that every time with whatever's been rendered. Let's see, we've got Firecracker, Firecracker, uh, number two, one, one. It looks like one's, be ooh, it's, whoa, no, now we got a lot of twos. We got a little Beats and Pomo going on here. I love um, it. I like that Lamont says, combine them into feel the fire. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be an intense can. <laughs> that would be, yeah. They both great. are kind of intense prompts, I, I guess. There's going to be a lot of energy. Yeah. No matter what. I think we're getting, we've gotten a few more for uh, number two, okay. which is feel the beat. And I love that because I think that whole vibe of like 80s, 90s, like exercise and then yeah. like, Everybody wearing like really bad Walkman headphones yes. and stuff. That would be oh. amazing. I can't wait to see those drawings. Very cool. Ooh, yeah, this is so neat seeing the, the way it's coming together. Look at that. Yeah, I know this is, I love like actually seeing the mockups. It's such a, such a rewarding part, um, part of the process. You're like, it's all shaded. How, like, I didn't even do that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it looks so It's real. wonderful. That looks great. Perfect. Okay. Now, did you find this mock-up and then you, you are, it allows you to do the multi, you know, you're basically showing it in different turns, right? Or did yeah. you just double it up or do, like triple, quadruple it up? You know what? I actually can't fully remember. I might have, it might've been three versions yeah. or three sides. And then I, I think I did five. So it gives that full Great. wrap. Um, but yeah, I know I, I bought this on somewhere online as like a PSD mock-up. Yeah. The smart um, objects. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's super convenient to have. And it's, I always like, um, having something where it does really show the final result for the client yes. just so that they can visualize it as much as possible to like what it really really will look like at the end um i think it's super helpful so it's so neat seeing the it feels like a family now you've only created one like it's so neat when you right. see it this way and then i love that you set this up and you made a great point not only are you making this for the client to use and using promotional items and things like that, but you've now just made your your portfolio piece as well by doing right. something so cool, right? Yeah, yeah, I really do just throw this into my portfolio and it's um, a fun piece. Great. Um, yeah. So one good question was, where do you get the barcode from? And I think, I, I don't know what you do, like I, my clients usually do supply it, but there are online, um, websites that will create it for you for free. There's a great UPC mm -hmm. code generator uh, as well. How do you, do you get them from your client or do you make them? Yeah, I, I do get them from my client. So this is what will be printed. Um, yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Always. I like to make sure anything legal, anything like that, it comes pr even like nutritional panels. Me. Yeah. Right. Like I'm like, I'm not your guy. Like, you know, right. like, like, because also I don't want to be responsible. You don't want to be responsible for no. it too. And I think, no. you know, your job is the creative, your job is all that, but, um, no. ask them up front. It's always a great thing to do. Um, what are the print retail requirements to think about when adding barcodes to your design that there, there are some based on the product themselves and the size of the product. I just worked on some pet food boxes that are super t small. And oh, unfortunately cool. the UPC code had incredible 
um, restrictions on how it had to be a certain size. So it took up so much of the real estate. Um, your client, again, has to know these things. If you if they don't, you know, you could be that liaison and you could do a little research and find out. Most of it's out there. It takes a little digging. Um, yeah. I think sometimes you come off as a great partner when your client is can count on you for that kind of stuff, you know, which is great. Absolutely. Yeah. And always remember too, like, don't hide it. Um, you, you could put it, make sure there's enough contrast, like Lisa said earlier, and then look and see there's, there's a neat new trend now where people are extending some of the lines and actually creating artwork and making custom UPCs, which is kind of neat. I saw like a spaghetti one where it looked like all the strands oh, cool. continued up and then they twirled around an illustrated fork. And it was the coolest idea. You do got to just make sure you're not, you're just extending past what the UPC code is and you're not uh, affecting it in any way. So it's still, and what's great is you can go, you can download a quick app like on your phone and test it out. You can do a quick scan to see if it works. That's super cool. Yeah, I love when people get creative with the um, the barcodes. Oh yeah, I'm still afraid to do it. I guess. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love like seeing others and yeah. them doing it really well. Yeah, it's neat. Everybody's kind of mm -hmm. digging. It's like somebody threw in, oh, I turned away for a while and I came back and you've done so much. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The bigger question is, why did you look away? Yes. <laughs> <Just kidding>. Come on. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I love it. Everyone's kind of digging this. It looks really, really cool. What are you uh, doing right now? Yeah, so I am. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. What yeah. am I doing? Um, I am uh, just kind of quickly rebuilding some of these badges so that I can throw them in the background of um, the mock-up. So uh, these got cut off a little bit. Um, so I'm just kind of refilling this in, but yeah, so I, I do like to kind of bring in the um, pattern design to the yes. background of the mock-up just to kind of give it some more personality and really show off the design, so. Yes, and I and the cool thing too is it's like, it's an, you, you've already done it, so let it be an, an asset to yeah. the social media or the marketing push and the things like that. So have right. them around there. It's a, fun, it's a fun little setup you made that like you can take whatever those hand-drawn elements are and let them be your backgrounds. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ooh, Kelly has a good one. Do you ever design with QR codes on labels? And I got to say, thanks to last year, uh, QR codes are back, everybody. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they they're are. Being, they're being used again. And, and I think it took a learning curve like last year. And now you're still seeing it with menus and things that everyone knows now your, your camera does it. You don't need an app to open up a QR code. Um, and so they're back. I, it's kind of been unique and it's a great way to continue the story. You know, there's only so much you can say on your packaging about the brand. Um, and if the company, let's say Lost Boys wants to do, you know, where you can find us. And if, there's a great part on their website that says how to find our cider. That could be their QR code, you know? So if you see a promotional poster, boom, next thing you know, you have directions on where you can find it. So true. So it, it, it definitely can help. I know they're a little bit of an eyesore. You know, I don't know. You, do you agree? Sometimes when you see them, you're kind of like, oh gosh, like it's. Yeah, I don't love them, but you're totally right that mm -hmm. they are back. Yeah, they are <laughs> back. <laughs> and I think they're, I don't know how long they're here to stay, but um, they're here. Yeah, yeah. I, I People again are making them quite creative. Um, if you can, I've seen them so tiny on packaging and the camera still picks them up. They're, they're pretty recognizable. So um, again, it's up to you guys and have a good conversation with your client on that, you know, which is yeah, great. Absolutely. Oh yeah. These are looking fun. So we, we've, 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 we've done, um, Lisa has done a quite amount of work here to show you how she took everything from beginning sketches, mastered yes. it into fresco, dropped it into illustrator, made a great label using templates, using pre-made things that kind of save your process flow along the way, and then taking it in and building something really amazing in, in Photoshop with these mock-ups, right? Yeah. And so I can, um, kind of keep going in and, um, yeah, taking the badges do. and then importing them. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so I'll switch back over Perfect. to illustrator. What did you got? What did, what did you guys like the best guys? What, what, what was the cool little, um, 
you know, magic moment, you saw Lisa do something <laughs> really cool that you didn't, you didn't know, drop it into chat. Before oh, we wrap yes. up to, you know, like I said, we will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific. Join us for part two on that. Um, after us today, we've got a great XD creative daily challenge with Jesse Showwater and coming up following uh, draw along with Kyle T. Webster. There's such good content Ooh. happening today. More after and before us tomorrow. It's going to be amazing stuff. Look at that. This is so cool. <laughs> Boy, good thing we didn't have a whole debate on. Now, what background color for the right? PSD? <laughs> you were <laughs> like, I'm not even going to go there. Keep it like, moving. <laughs> open a can of worms, right? Yeah, I know. It is fun because honestly, the options are endless, which definitely makes it makes it fun. And, you know, you, you never know what you're going to get. Um, but wow, I am making this file really big. So sorry for <laughs> some of the lags. But um, let me jump back into Illustrator. Grab this one. Yeah, even um, I, it, gosh, if we get a chance tomorrow with Dimension, we can show, we could take these things oh, and even awesome. have them make it look like they are posters and cool things, even way far behind in depth and out of focus and really cool stuff. There's so many fun ways to kind of customize this stuff now, which is really cool. That would be so fun. I would love that. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I have never, I don't think I've even opened it um, up. So I'll, I'll have to download it tonight. And yeah. Kind of do a double check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll do a tech, a, a little tech check on it for sure. Yes. But yeah. I'm totally up for that. It sounds really fun. This is neat too, because your elements you're using could be, you can use these on t-shirts, tote bags, like the cool, the extensions that your the client can do from this are yeah. so wonderful, right? Like keep that in mind, guys, everything that you make for the client, like show them different ways that you can take these things and they can use it and make the most from what they're, they're getting out of you, you know, charge for it, but you know, right. I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I definitely have a background in like apparel and merchandise. So it, it is funny how everything kind of looks like that. So, yes. you know, there's <laughs> that always kind of shines through. Um, I just lost that. So I'm going to repaste this in. Oh, thanks for everybody. Everybody had a great time today. Awesome to see you guys. Make sure to join us tomorrow. We're going to yeah. continue on with this. Give us a little sneak peek. What are we doing tomorrow? Yeah, so it sounds like tomorrow, I think, um, if I was reading the chat right, oh, yes. um, we, we will be doing Feel the Beat, um, yep. which is... All right. Oh, we are done. We are, we're looking like we're done, guys. So oh, awesome. Join us tomorrow again, part two. Can't wait to see you guys there, all right? Bye, y'all. Bye. Thank you so much.